When I think about what it means to me that uh, our research won the Jacobs Prize, there, there are several different levels, but uh, the most important one is the stamp of excellence from the Jacobs Foundation. So this is a foundation that's known all around the world, uh, at least in the world of social sciences and behavioral sciences, as standing for excellence. And we've always worked hard to try to make our research um, excellent. Uh, and it's like receiving the the stamp of approval from a real authority that we've succeeded. What this uh, award provides is flexibility for innovation. So when we have a new idea, when we have uh, a new window of opportunity, I think this will enable us uh, as researchers, for Terry and I, to really seize the moment. Uh, it allows us to be more uh, nimble uh, and rather than uh, spend a year or two to raise the funds to um, adopt a new method, to uh, focus on a new question uh, once a window of opportunity is available, uh, now we can actually act on it right away. We can be nimble. Uh, and that, I think, is uh, a very, very special gift for um, uh, researchers both our study in uh, longitudinal study of the cohort in Britain and in New Zealand is identify children um, early in life who are uh, showing severe uh, persistent uh, aggression and antisocial behavior such as stealing, fighting, um, being truant from school and then follow those up uh, right through adolescence and into young adulthood uh, to the age where uh, they seem to take two paths. Uh, one group of them um, becomes uh, happy, healthy young adults. They get jobs, they get girlfriends, they um, straighten up and fly right, you might say. They, they take on a, a conventional lifestyle and become productive citizens. Uh, another group seems to become more trapped in antisocial behavior and they be, their uh, aggression becomes more and more violent, they become um, more involved in crime as adults, their crime becomes more sophisticated, uh, they uh, have difficulty uh, getting employment uh, because of their criminal record, uh, they develop addictions and they sink lower and lower uh, as they go on in life. Uh, and if they get a job, they might steal from their employer. If they get a girlfriend, they might beat her with domestic violence. And so we're interested in understanding why two children who start at the same place end up going in such different directions, uh, one very positive outcome and one unfortunate outcome. So that's what we work on. One of the things that characterizes the children that turn out best is they have warm relationships with their parents. So even though they're involved in a bit of delinquency, uh, they before they became uh, uh, started to engage in antisocial behavior, they had family affection. Uh, the other good thing about them is that they, they tend to be intelligent and so they do well in school, they have good grades, and when they finish school, even though they've been involved in delinquency, they're still able to get a good job. And because they had warm affection with their families, they're able to get a good girlfriend. So it seems that those are two of the, of the most important things, is to be intelligent and to have love with your parents. Uh, we're looking at early childhood as being a period when um, people exper may experience a lot of stress uh, or um, uh, disorders such as anxiety, depression, uh, attention deficit disorder, conduct problems. Uh, they may start substance abuse uh, problems in childhood and adolescence. Um, there's emerging evidence that those early childhood problems may be predictors of later age-related diseases, but we don't understand why. So what is it that having a childhood disorder does to the physical body? How does it change the cardiovascular system? How does it change uh, the respiratory system? How does it change the brain um, early in life, quite early in life? And what could be done uh, to prevent age-related diseases if we did more to help children who are under stress. Now, you might think, why don't we just prevent people from having stress? 
there's always going to be stress in life. People will always have their individual sources of stress. But what we can do is when people experience, young people experience stress, we know that um, the reactions to the stress uh, in terms of mental dis childhood mental disorders, it, that's treatable. So we could uh, intervene early in life by treating childhood mental disorders uh, more effectively and thereby enhance people's old age health. So. A gene environment um, interaction um, occurs whenever a person's genotype influences their vulnerability or their uh, resilience to particular environmental pathogens. Uh, the environmental pathogen can be social, uh, for example, child abuse or the death of a spouse. Um, the environmental pathogen can also be non-social. For example, uh, it can be your uh, diet, uh, it can be um, um, lead exposure, it could be drug um, use. Um, what's important to appreciate is that what uh, genes often do is they control how we respond in many circumstances to our environment. Um, our genes, of course, um, are not our um, choices. Right? Uh, we inherit our genes. Um, but what we can modify, what we can alter, are some of the pathogens uh, that we expose ourselves to. Um, and that becomes uh, a window uh, of change and a window uh, to intervene by altering the kinds of lifestyle uh, choices that we make, by altering the kinds of uh, experiences uh, to which people are exposed. You know, one can think of um, genes as being uh, the chances uh, of life whereas uh, the lifestyles are the choices uh, and those are uh, where we have an opportunity to intervene in people's uh, lives. I think one of the things that we've learned most from our research in the past 10 years when we brought in the approach to gene environment interaction studies is that um, uh, genes alone are not enough to influence behavior. You get your genes by chance. No one can choose their parents. Uh, so that's a chance part of life. But then we have choices of what kinds of lifestyles we want to live, what kinds of decisions we make. And those choices really uh, condition what the outcomes can be. I suppose the clearest message from our longitudinal research following children from birth to midlife is the necessity of intervening as early as possible. Um, and by that I would mean interventions in the school systems, but also interventions in the family and things that parents can do to give children better opportunities. Um, if a child finds themselves in an unhealthy pathway, uh, to a poor outcome, it's never too late to change. Uh, the research that uh, Terry and I uh, uh, have done, I think, has, has been important in also helping us identify uh, the early years of life as a really critical uh, window uh, for intervening in order to prevent adult psychiatric uh, disorders. So um, we have learned, for instance, that over half uh, of indiv uh, individuals uh, with adult psychiatric disorders actually had their first uh, uh, emotional and behavioral problems before the age uh, of 15. Uh, this is a remarkable finding that I think really tells us that it's very important to focus on uh, the early uh, years uh, of life.